Over the years, automakers have consolidated accessory drive components such as the alternator, air conditioning compressor, water pump, and power steering pump onto one multi-rib serpentine belt. However, in the late 2000s, automakers began to add a new type of belt to the system. In order to decrease weight and manufacturing costs in the vehicle, to assist with belt routing issues, and to take some of the load off the main accessory drive belt, they began to use a stretch belt, or stretch fit belt, along with the existing serpentine belt in the system. GM, for example, started using stretch belts to power the air conditioning compressor on some 2009 models with the LS V8 engine. While a stretch belt may look similar to a serpentine belt, there's some key differences that your customers should be aware of when replacing one. First, let's talk about belt construction. A conventional serpentine belt is built with center tensile cords made of a twisted polyester and sometimes with aramid fiber cords, which helps prevent stretching. On the other hand, a stretch belt is made with polyamide tensile cord, which is engineered with a specific amount of elasticity. This creates the stretch fit feature that maintains proper tension once installed. In automotive applications, stretch fit belts are short belts and they typically fit simple two-point drives. This helps eliminate the noise and slippage often found in longer belt spans and it reduces the friction losses from contact with multiple pulleys found in many serpentine belt drives. The result is a more efficient and quieter belt drive. Because of their unique internal construction, stretch fit belts are self-tensioning, meaning they don't use a mechanical tensioner like conventional serpentine belts do. Stretch fit belts must be placed onto the pulleys using specific tooling and instructions that are provided with the belt. A key point to remind your customers is that stretch belts are designed to be a one-time use component. If the component the stretch fit belt is driving needs to be replaced, the stretch fit belt is usually removed by cutting it off or can be taken off without cutting it. Regardless of how it's removed, the belt cannot be reused. Also, if a stretch belt wears to a point where it can no longer effectively grip the pulleys, it'll start to slip. The primary cause of slipping is material being removed from the belt ribs, not the belt stretching. The belt must be replaced at this time also. It's very important to explain to your customers that stretch fit belts are not interchangeable with traditional serpentine belts, even though they may look and feel similar. A serpentine belt should not be used on drives designed for stretch belts, and stretch belts should not be used on drives that use an automatic tensioner. To prevent confusion, belt manufacturers will add identifiers to their part numbers to indicate that the belt is a stretch fit application. E for elastic or SF for stretch fit are commonly used by manufacturers to identify their stretch fit belts. Stretch belts can last 100,000 miles or more, but this can vary dramatically depending on the vehicle's environment and where the belt is mounted. That's why inspection is recommended to determine if a stretch fit belt is past its prime. Because the differences between a worn belt and a good belt can't be seen or felt, your customer should measure the depths of the ribs with a belt gauge. If they need a new stretch belt, be sure to recommend a new serpentine belt, tensioner and pulleys as well because they all wear at the same rate and most serpentine belts have to be removed to service the stretch belt. I'm Josh Cable, thanks for watching.